Hello and welcome to episode 2 of the Unreal Engine C++ training series. I'm your host Pharaoh, and today we'll be working on something uh, pretty interesting. We'll be working on the, uh, the functions begin play and tick. Now these functions, they work in C++ um, as well as in Blueprints, which we haven't uh, gone over yet, but there are plenty of other tutorials you can go ahead and check out. Um, and these, these functions have some pretty unique qualities about them. Uh, here I've just opened up uh, the first person template, which you can do by going to the Epic Games Launcher, clicking Launch, and then a window will pop up. The window will look something a little like this. Now these are just different projects. You can go click on New Project, uh, click on C++, and then First Person. Uh, I have no starter content in here because we're not going to be using anything uh, too special. And then just give it a name, give it whatever name you want. So once you have that, you'll come to a screen that looks something like this. And a Visual Studio project will open up for you. And right here, I've opened up the character. Blue, or we've got the character source file and the character header file, which you can find by clicking on this arrow right here to the left side of the screen. C++ classes, open up this folder, and here we've got the character, the game mode, the HUD, and the projectile. Today we're only going to be focusing on the character, so we're going to click that, double click that to open it. And here we've got the character source and the character header. I'm going to assume that you're familiar uh, with navigating Visual Studio. Um, but here we are. If we just go through the source right here, um, we're going to scroll down through the constructor where, we, where we've got tons of components and different variables being set. And right underneath the constructor, we've got the begin play function for the character. The begin play function is attached to every actor, uh, pawn, or character in Unreal Engine. Um, and they will come pre, uh, they, they're uh, functions that are actually built into the actor class. Um, so they're actually virtual functions. If we go into the header file here, you can see that uh, it is protected and it is a virtual function. And it is begin play and we've overridden it here in the character uh, source file. What you'll notice is that we do not have the keyword override here uh, that is normally associated with virtual functions. You can add that and it's actually recommended by Epic. So if we come down to the coding standard, which will be uh, linked in the, in the video description down below, if you come into the coding standard, uh, which is given to us by Epic um, and just different things that we should be looking out for, different recommendations that they have for Unreal Engine and C++, if we go to override and final, it says override and final, uh, these keywords are valid for use and their use is strongly encouraged. Um, basically, there will be likely times where these are a bit in, uh, omitted, but will be fixed over time. Uh, so they, they omitted it here in the begin play uh, function right here, um, but I've gone ahead and added that anyway just for, uh, just for consistency sake. So if we come into the begin play, this, this function will be called the very moment that the player or the, the actor is spawned into the level. So if the actor is spawned into the level, as soon as the level begins, it'll be right then. So when we get to the begin play function, we almost always want to call on these virtual functions that we have here, these, this super colon colon begin play. What this does is it calls the base class uh, for begin play. So if there's um, anything in particular in the begin play original function that we need to uh, go ahead and access, then we'll get that from, from this calling the base class here. And just to demonstrate that uh, this works, what we're going to do is we have this onFire function, 
and I'm going to take this, copy that, and I'm going to call the onFire function inside of begin play. So hopefully what we should see, I'm going to go ahead and save it and compile in the editor. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to call the onFire function from begin play and what that will do is it will fire the gun that we have in the first person template uh, as soon as the game is begun. So I've got a uh, completed compile. So I'm going to come up here and hit play and as soon as I click play the gun is fired. The gun can also be fired using the uh, left mouse button fairly standard so I'm going to go ahead and hit play again does it again Hit play again, it does it again. It works. Oop, wrong button. So the begin play function works. Um, and now we can move on to another thing, another function, which is the tick function. So we're going to go ahead and have to add that in ourselves. We're going to add it just right under uh, begin play. Once again, tick is a virtual function and it doesn't return anything. So it's so its return type is void. So we're going to add tick. And what with tick, we have to add in uh, a parameter. And it takes in a parameter of a float, and it's called delta time. Delta time is going to be what the time is between each frame. Because tick is going to be called every single frame. Now, Of course, we want to make sure that not a whole lot of things get done in tick. So we don't want crazy uh, different mathematical functions. We don't want to do anything too much inside of the tick function because it will cause us performance issues later on down the line. If you've got um, different different functions firing off uh, too many too many too many of them during the tick, what will happen is we'll we'll come into uh, performance issues. So right here, we're going to use something fairly standard um, and really nice for debugging. Uh, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to log a message. But before we can do that, we're going to call the base tick class just to make sure. And we're going to pass it delta time. And in the log, to use the log, what we're going to do is we're going to go UE underscore log. It's a nice macro that they give us um, that'll give us a, an, a formatted message, um, any kind of message that we need. And the documentation for it will also be in the description down below if you would like some more info on the log. So we're going to go log temp. We're going to pass it a warning. And we're going to use the text macro that Unreal Engine gives us to go ahead and input some text. So we're going to say character tick. Wow, K and the L are the same letter for me, I guess. Um, so right here, yep, we've got no error messages, which is good. Usually when you use macros, IntelliSense inside of Visual Studio will freak out um, and it won't like it too much. So I'm going to go ahead and save that, come back into the editor, and compile. Hopefully this shouldn't take too long. I only added a few lines of code. Wow, this is actually taking longer than I thought. Oh, here we go. Compile complete. So what we should do is we, sit, we hit play. Of course, our fire shot goes off, um, but we don't see anything. And that's because we don't have the log open. If, we're, if you open up the console using the tilde key at the top left of your keyboard and type in show log, all one word, and hit enter, you will, you will notice that our log opens up and oh my goodness, look at all of these. This is getting called every single frame. So if I come in and I also say stat FPS, I can see how many how many draw calls were, or I'm sorry, not draw calls, how many frames are being rendered 
and right now I've got 120 frames being rendered. So this tick function is being called 120 times per second or every 8.33 milliseconds. So now you can obviously see why you can't be doing too much in the tick function because you don't need 8,000 functions going off 8.33 millisecond in every 8.33 milliseconds. It's just not physically, it's just not possible for it to do that. All right, so that, that covers the tick function and the begin play function. There's also, for actors in Unreal 4, there's also a virtual void end play. And this takes in an e end play reason. And I just call it reason. It's giving me an error. I don't know why. But we can go ahead and take a look at it in the documentation. So Unreal Engine for end play. So we've got a actor end play. Let's go ahead and open that up in a new tab. And because it wants an end play reason type. So if I feed that in there, we should have our function just fine. Oh, and it's pouring outside now. That's cool. And boom. What we can also do is we can also say at the end of play, we can write UE log and it's just going to print out to the log, I'm done. So I'm going to go ahead and save and compile this. And I'm going to open up the editor and the log side by side. You can see it's compiling down in the bottom right. And hopefully what's going to happen is the gun should fire from begin play. We're going to see in yellow a bunch of text saying, saying character tick. Then I'm going to hit escape and at the, when I hit escape it should say I'm done. So let's go ahead and hit play. The gun has been fired, character tick. And after I hit escape, I'm done gets printed out to the screen. So pretty basic stuff. Hope you all learned something. If you uh, have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Also, if you have anything, any tips, tricks, anything to help me improve, to help everybody else improve, that would be wonderful. And thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one.